Yo, what's up guys? It's Noah here. Uh, and in today's video, I'm going to be breaking down the NBA slate on DraftKings and Yahoo for Friday, May the 13th. Friday the 13th. Uh, we got a two-game slate for Friday night. We're going to talk through this two, these two games, guys. Uh, we got game six of Boston and Milwaukee. Right now, Milwaukee's up 3-2 in that series with a chance to close things out, move on to the Eastern Conference Finals. And then we have Memphis and Golden State. Golden State at home up 3-2 in that series, a win, and they would move on to the Western Conference Finals. So got some elimination games tonight. Um, you know, this could be one of our last two game slates of the season, depending on if, you know, if Golden State wins, if Milwaukee wins, because right now, there, right now there's no games scheduled for Saturday, but we could maybe have two games on Sunday, not exactly sure. Um, the, the Dallas and Phoenix game is going on at the time I'm making this video, and right now Dallas is up big, so it looks like Dallas is probably going to uh, keep that series alive, and that game seven will be on Sunday. Don't know if we're going to have any other games on Sunday, though, um, but yeah, this could be one of our last two game slates of the season. Again, I don't know yet what my plans are for, for you know, moving forward. Like, if we're just going to have showdown slates, like, I don't know if I'm going to cover the showdown slates. Um, we'll have to see, like, what the prize pools look like, if they're worth, you know, making content for. But I've enjoyed making content during the playoffs, guys. I know these slates can kind of be repetitive. It almost feels like you're playing the same slate over and over. But it's still been fun to make these videos for you guys. Um, you know, I'll still be pumping out prize picks content. And that's something that I've been doing recently. You know, a lot of you guys have been showing support on the Prospects content. I appreciate all you guys watching those videos. Um, if you're new here, Prospects is the sponsor of this video, so you can check them out. Link down below in the description, or just make sure when you sign up for Prospects, use promo code NOAH, and they will match your first deposit up to $100 when you do sign up with my promo code. So Prospects is a player prop-based DFS site. Very simple. You're just picking the over or the under on players' projections, and they do have some projections posted right now for Friday. They don't have a ton up on the board. But obviously, as we get closer to the start of the games on Friday night, their full board will be posted. You can take a look at that, make some picks for yourself. You have to make at least two picks, but you can make up to five picks, and you can win up to 10 extra money on prize picks. Um, they have a lot of other sports as well outside of just NBA. You can mix and match sports. Um, you can do you know maybe like two picks in MLB, two picks in NBA, combine those to do different entries. It's, it's a ton of fun. I know a lot of you guys play on prize picks already, but if you're new, you want to sign up over there. Get signed up and use promo code NOAH so that way you get your first deposit matched up to $100. And as always, guys, you know, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Appreciate all you guys checking out these videos every single day. And let's let's talk through this Friday night slate. So we'll start off with the Boston and Milwaukee game and start off on the Boston side. So looking at the Celtics here, um, you know, worth noting that Robert Williams is once again questionable for this game. Robert Williams has missed the last two games for Boston. Uh, we don't really know the the true, you know, severity of this injury that he's dealing with obviously with him sitting these playoff games it's pretty it must be pretty serious um does Rob Williams play today I'm not exactly sure we'll, we'll have to monitor that um we'll talk through how things you know change maybe if he's in or out but starting off at the top with Jason Tatum I mean Jason Tatum obviously is in play today on a two-game slate he's been you know pretty good in back-to-back -back games usage have been great minutes have been super high he's played at least 40 minutes so far in every game in this series back-to-back -back games with 55 and 52 DK points when you're looking at this slate as a whole and you have Giannis, you have Steph Curry on the slate, you know, how does Tatum kind of rank between those three? Uh, Giannis, for, for me, is still going to be like my favorite payup option if I can fit him. I think Steph is probably still second for me. Um, I know Steph was kind of disappointing last game, but I would expect Golden State to bounce back tonight, you know, after they got blown out on the road last game. So I would probably still put Tatum third behind Giannis and Steph. Obviously, Tatum is in play. I just think you get much, you get a higher ceiling from from Giannis, and I think if Steph can get hot from three, I mean, we know Steph has a massive ceiling too, but that's not saying anything negative about Tatum. Um, Tatum's going to play huge minutes if the game's close, and obviously with their season on the line tonight, you expect him to you know, probably take on a lot of uses, take on a heavy role. You would think he's going to try and do whatever he can to keep this series alive, so I think Tatum's for sure in play. Don't have an issue with Jalen Brown either. Jalen Brown was in a little bit of foul trouble last game, um, did play 35 minutes when normally he plays about 40 minutes. Or maybe it was the game before that. I might be wrong. It might have been the game before that when he was in foul trouble. That was my mistake. Um, he might might have not been in foul trouble last game. He did play 35 minutes. Normally, he plays like 38 to 40. I think most nights, were, you know, especially in a game like this where your season is is you know on the line, I think we're getting probably 40 minutes from Jalen Brown. So at 8,200, I think he is you know firmly in play as a mid-range option. Al Horford continues to be great in this series. Just been super, super productive. Been playing huge minutes. I think he does benefit a little bit if Robert Williams is out again, but I still think even if Robert Williams plays, Horford's going to have a big role. I mean, he's been so good in the series. They like his defense. He's been you know, knocking down threes. He's just been doing everything when he's on the floor. He's a productive uh, point-per-minute player. He's a guy that can you know score, get rebounds, get assists. He can get defensive stats too. 
I think it's 7,200. Horford still looks like a pretty good option today. Uh, Marcus Smart is a mid-range guard play. I think it's fine. Um, I do kind of question the ceiling on Marcus Smart. Um, we haven't seen him show much of a ceiling so far in this series. His best game was two games ago when he put up 36 DK points in 41 minutes. But we know for the most part the minutes are going to be there. He should play close to 40 minutes if this game is close. Obviously, Smart is you know a key piece for Boston. They like his defense. Um, obviously, defensive player of the year. He's he's a guy they're go they're going to want to have out there. So I think you know we're getting huge minutes from Marcus Smart. I think the price tag is about right, but he is still viable for me. And then Robert Williams, if he plays, it's a little tricky just because we don't exactly know like what his health is. If he does play, is he full go? We we're not really sure. You know, so far in the series, when Williams has played, his minutes have not been super high. So, even if Robert Williams is in, like, I'm not really that excited about him today. Um, he's not going to be someone that I really run to roster. Grant Williams has started the last two games in place of Robert Williams, but he's kind of been, you know, just mediocre. Um, last game was terrible. He only had three drafting points in 31 minutes. Um, has zero points, two rebounds, one assist, and that was his stat line, two turnovers. He's been bad, but, you know, we've seen Grant Williams... We've seen Grant Williams put up good games, and we know the minutes for the most part should be there. He's a guy that they want out there for defensive purposes. Um, he's done a fairly good job at you know defending Giannis in this series. I feel a little bit better about him if Rob Williams remains out, just because I think you know getting those starters minutes or getting at least a start is, is beneficial. Um, not saying you know if he starts, he's going to play like huge minutes or anything, but I think he will get you know probably low 30s, um, maybe high 20s. If Rob Williams is in, slight downgrade for Grant, uh, Grant Williams, but I still think he would be viable. And then the one guy worth mentioning is Derek White, just because Derek White has actually closed the last two games, and he's played over Grant Williams, you know, kind of the, in those crunch time minutes. He's played 34 and 32 minutes the last two games. Been fairly productive as well with 23 and 28 drafting points. You know, this is a play that I'm not personally that high on. Like, I think, you know, the public might overreact a little bit to Derek White getting increased minutes. Like, does this continue? I really don't know. I think it's going to be kind of like a hot hand situation. We know Tatum, Jalen Brown, Horford, probably smart. We know those four guys are going to be on the court, you know, in the closing minutes. The fifth guy could be, you know, Robert Williams. If he plays, it could be him. It could be Grant Williams. It could be Derek White. I mean, if Derek White plays 30 to 32 minutes, then he's a pretty good value play, but I'm just not confident that he continues to play 30 to 32 minutes. I think you could see Grant Williams get those closing minutes. If if Robert Williams returns, you can maybe see him take some minutes away from Derek White. So I think, you know, for me, especially if Derek White's going to be popular, I think that's a guy that I would just be fine, you know, not playing um, personally. I know he's done well the last two games. I'm just, I'm just a little little hesitant on the minutes. I don't think those minutes, you know, those 30 plus minutes that he's gotten back to by games, I don't think those are just guaranteed. Uh, but I would expect him to play, you know, probably mid 20s at least. You, you're going to want him to get around 30 minutes though to, to be worth his, you know, worth rostering, especially if he's going to be popular. But let's talk about Milwaukee now. I'm um, talking about the other side of this game. So looking at the Bucks, you got Giannis at the top for 11-9. I mean, I think Giannis is probably the top payup option on this slate. He's been the pay up, best payup option, you know, pretty much every slate he's been on so far in the postseason. He's been super consistent. Obviously, has shown a massive ceiling, at least 60 drafting points in what, you know, five, you know, four out of the five games in the series. He's just been great. I mean, it's nothing negative to say about Giannis. He continues to dominate on a nightly basis. Utah's rate is math, uh, massive, playing huge minutes as well. I think Giannis is a really good payup option. I like Drew Holiday quite a bit in the mid-range. Drew Holiday's been pretty good the last few games in this series. He's also been playing huge minutes, and his usage rate has been really good as well. He's pretty much been second in the team or second on the team in usage behind Giannis. Last game had once again like another poor shooting game. Shot nine for 24. Still scored 53 drafting points. He had eight re or eight rebounds, eight assists, two blocks, and a steal. Like outside of the scoring and you know the volume that he's been getting with the shots, he's been getting rebounds. He's been getting assists. He's been getting defensive stats as well. Like Drew has just been really good so far in the series. I think no Chris Middleton is a big bump for him. Doesn't look like Chris Middleton's going to play in the series. Right now, Draft, DraftKings has him listed as out, um, but it looks like here that uh, Coach Bud did remain or said that Middleton remains out for Game 5, but he didn't rule out the All-Star out for the entire series, so I guess there's a possibility that Middleton returns tonight, but like I think that's pretty unlikely, especially with them being up 3-2. Maybe if they go to Game 7, then maybe Middleton would play in a Game 7, but I think you know Middleton's probably going to be out again, so would expect a big role for Giannis and Drew, and I do like Drew at only 7,900 on DraftKings. I think Drew looks pretty good on Yahoo as well. $36 over there. Price tag came up a dollar, but I still think he's a pretty good play on Yahoo. And then the rest of the Bucks. So you have Bobby Portis, who came off the bench last game, but did play really well. Had 39 DraftKings points in 28 minutes. 
you know, he did kind of get those closing minutes over Brook Lopez. We saw Brook Lopez's minutes get cut down a lot last game. Does that continue into tonight? Like, I really don't know. It's been tough to predict, you know, when it comes to Portis and Lopez, how their minutes are going to be divvied up. It could be Portis, you know, it could be Portis that plays 20 minutes tonight and Lopez gets 28. Like, just not not confident in, in Bobby Portis, but we know he is a guy that can produce when he does get minutes. So he's someone that I definitely would have some interest playing in tournaments if the ownership's going to be low. If everyone's going to play Bobby Portis because he had a big game last game, then again, like this is someone that I think I'd be fine fading because you know since he got moved back to the bench, his minutes have not been super secure. Um, he only played 15 the game before that after getting 28 last game. At 5,200, I think Portis is a fine play. I'd just be a little cautious there, especially if he's going to be really chalky. Again, Brooke Lopez did not play much at all last game, just 20 minutes. Um, he's still fairly cheap, but you know, Brooke Lopez is one of these guys that, like, even when he gets, like, 30 minutes, I mean, he's not a guy that offers a massive ceiling. I have played Brooke Lopez a lot so far in the playoffs. I'm a little concerned last game after he only played 20 minutes, just kind of out of nowhere. If he gets back up to, like, 28, 29 minutes today, then he's a good play. But, yeah, like, I'm just... After seeing Brook Lopez only play 20 minutes last game, that is definitely concerning. I'm a little bit hesitant to go to him. Pat Connaughton, I mean, coming off the bench, continues to play really well. 30 minutes now in three straight games. Obviously, production has not been great. I mean, he's never been a super productive point-per-minute player. But his role seems to be pretty locked into, you know, 28, 30 minutes. He's been closing over Grayson Allen for the most part. So I think Connaughton is still a fine value. I mean, Grayson Allen, even though he's been starting, has not really been that productive. He did play 30 minutes last game, but you know, so far in the series, he's only put up over 20 DraftKings points once in the five games in the series. The price tag has come down to 3,800, so like I think Grayson Allen is a playable value. He's not someone that I'm super confident in, but you know, if he can knock down a couple threes, maybe grab a few rebounds, get an assist or two, I mean, he can he can grind his way to 24 DraftKings points. Um, but again, like I'm not, I'm not running to roster Grace Allen today. Really, my my two favorite plays on Milwaukee are definitely Giannis and Drew. But that's it for this game. Let's move on to the next game: Memphis and Golden State. So, looking at Memphis today, uh, once again, John ja Morant is going to be out for Memphis. And you know, so far in the last two game or the last you know two games without Ja, I mean, we've kind of seen like everyone benefits without Ja. And Jaron Jackson Jr. has been a big beneficiary. He only played 25 minutes last game, but you can't really look too much into that because obviously Memphis just beat the crap out of Golden State. Uh, none of the starters played in the fourth quarter. It, you know, it was a massive blowout, but he was still really productive. He had 42 DK points in only 25 minutes. The game before that, he had 41 DK points in 34 minutes. If you look at the on-off splits, like whenever Ja is off the floor, Jaron Jackson Jr. is one of the guys that really benefits, gets a big bump in usage, and he's kind of shown that you know the last two games with over 40 drafting points in back-to-back -back games. Even though the price tag is up to 7K, I actually like Jaron Jackson Jr. quite a bit today just because I think his role is going to be really good. I think the opportunity is going to be there. Obviously, you know, foul trouble is a concern for Jaron Jackson Jr., but for the most part, he's actually been able to stay out of foul trouble in this series. He's definitely been a lot better at not, you know, just picking up stupid fouls. So I like Jaron Jun uh, Jackson Jr. a lot today. I think Desmond Bain is fine. You know, he started to, he looked a little bit better last game, put up 29 DK points in 24 minutes. He shot the ball pretty well. He's been dealing with his back injury for a while, and it's kind of it seems to have you know kind of derailed him a little bit. He just hasn't been that productive in this series. But last game he did shoot the ball well. He had 21 points in only 24 minutes. Maybe this is the start of something, you know, a positive trend for Desmond Bain. So it, it, what it what should be pretty low ownership. I think Desmond Bain is a playable option today. Um, obviously, it's it's good to see him score you know over 20 points last game. Dylan Brooks, I mean, he continues to have a pretty big role. Uh, last two games, 39 minutes in uh, that first game without Ja. Um, obviously shot the ball terribly, but still had 31 DK points. In the last game, he he went to the locker room for a little bit and obviously lost a lot of minutes because of the blowout. Still put up 25 DK points in 24 minutes. Yo, This season without Ja, he's been a you know fancy point-per-minute player. He does also get a big bump in usage with Ja off the floor. We know Dylan Brooks is not afraid to shoot the ball. He's going to shoot the ball a ton. He's going to, probably going to get some rebounds. He'll get some assists as well. There's going to be a lot of opportunity for these guys to pick up some assists with, with Ja off the floor since Ja is such a ball-dominant player. So I think Dylan Brooks is 6K. Still looks like a pretty good option. I do like him on both sides. 6K on DraftKings, 20 bucks on Yahoo. He's for sure one of my favorite small forward plays today on Yahoo. Um, then Tyus Jones. I mean, Tyus Jones has just been great the last two games without Ja. 41 minutes in that first game uh, in a close game. Put up 37 DK points. Last game in only 24 minutes, he almost averaged two fancy points per minute. He put up 46 DraftKings points in 24 minutes. I don't expect that type of reduction for Tyus Jones, but clearly he's going to play massive minutes if it's a close game. He played 41 minutes in their last competitive game. I think we're going to get close to 40 minutes from Tyus Jones here if the game stays close. 
5700 I mean, the price tag is starting to rise, but I think he should be like, man, I think Tyus Jones should be closer to 7 k I think he should be priced up there with guys like Bain and, you know, Dylan Brooks and even Jaron Jackson Jr. So I still think Tyus Jones is too cheap today. Like him a lot at 5700 Like him on Yahoo as well. Uh, $20, I think he's also too cheap on Yahoo. And then the other guy I want to mention is Steven Adams. I mean, Steven Adams was clearly like the best value play on the slate last game. He only played 22 minutes, but he was another guy that lost a lot of minutes because of the blowout. Um, he's, he was on pace to play about 30 minutes, had the game stay close. Put up 27 DraftKings points in those 22 minutes. The last two games that he has started, he's been productive. 37 and 27 DK points in fairly limited minutes. I think if this game's close, we're getting probably 26 to 30 minutes from Steven Adams. And we know Steven Adams is a really good point per minute player. Should average about a fancy point per minute. If he plays around 30 minutes, he's probably going to get around 30 DraftKings points. And at 4,500, that definitely is you know going to be good value. So still think Steven Adams is too cheap. Um, I like him on both sites. He's cheap on Yahoo as well. $12.00. He looks like a, a really good value play. Once again, price tag did not come up enough, in my opinion. And then the bench guys, so like Kyle Anderson, once again, was pretty productive in limited minutes. Only played 19 minutes in the blowout, but had 28 draftings points. His minutes have not been like super, super high, but he's been really productive the last two games. Like I have a feeling this, you know, this super crazy production that he's been going through, like the averaging almost two fancy points per minute, like that's got to regress at some point. I don't expect Kyle Anderson to put up 35 DraftKings points in 20 minutes every game. So he's someone that like I'm not really excited to roster, um, especially like if he's going to be really popular because he's put up these big games. Like I, I'd be fine fading him. I think he's going to play like 22, 24 minutes. He should average close to a fancy point per minute. Probably gets like 20, 22 DraftKings points, which is good you know, for his salary. But if he's going to be like massive chalk, then you know I'm going to want more than 22 DraftKings points if I'm rostering him as massive chalk. So... That's my thoughts on Kyle Anderson, kind of a guy that I'm not that high on. D'Anthony Melton saw a little bit more minutes last game, played 24 minutes after just playing nine minutes the game before. I think he did get some blowout run, though, if I remember correctly. He did actually play in the blowout, so he might have benefited because of that. You know, I think most nights D'Anthony Melton's playing like high teens, maybe low 20s minutes. He's only 4,100, so he's a playable value option. Obviously, there is minutes, a lot of minutes available right now with, with Ja out. And that's it for Memphis. I mean, Brandon Clark's price tag has come way down, 3900 but he just hasn't been used that much in this series. He played 14 minutes last game. He's basically just been the backup center to Steven Adams. So if Steven Adams is getting like 28 minutes, that probably means Brandon Clark's only playing like 20 minutes at the most. They could even play Triple J at the five in this matchup. So yeah, like even though the price tag is way down on Brandon Clark, I'm not really that excited to roster him. Um, he, he has a path to a big game if the minutes are there. It's just that so far in the series, especially the last three games, the minutes have really not been there for Brandon Clark. So he's a tough guy to trust right now, even though the price tag is way down. You know, mainly mainly the guys in the mid-range, I mean, Brooks, Bain, Triple J, Ad, basically the starters are, is what I really looked at looking at for Memphis. And if you want to take some shots on Anderson, Melton, maybe Clark, yeah, it's fine. But that's it for Memphis. Let's talk about Golden State right now, or Golden State now before we do in the video. So looking at Golden State, you have Steph Curry at 9,200, who, like I said, is probably my second favorite payup option behind Giannis. I know Steph was disappointing last game, but pretty much the entire Golden State team was. I mean, they lost by like 40. Nobody played more than you know halfway through the third quarter. All the starters got subbed out. When Steph has been in competitive games so far in the series, he's shown a pretty good ceiling. I mean, over 50 drafting points in game two, uh, had 52 DK points in game four. Now Golden State going back home. You obviously, you know, you expect them to Wants to try and close out this series at home. I expect Steph to be chucking. Um, so far in the series, he's had pretty good usage in the games that have stayed close. When he's played his full minutes, you know, you're seeing 20, 25 shot attempts. If he can get hot, we know Steph has a massive ceiling. And obviously, playing at home with that home crowd, I think Steph offers a lot of upside. I would say, he again, he's probably my second favorite stub behind Giannis today. I think Clay in the mid range again is is fine. You know, like we haven't seen much of a ceiling from Clay, but we obviously know that ceiling is there if he can get hot from the field. Playing at home, I feel like Clay plays a lot better at home. That might just be me. Um, that might be just me guessing. But if I had to guess, like I would think Clay's stats at home versus on the road are way better. Um, might just be a might just be me just rambling. But looking at his you know splits this season at home, averaging you know 33 DraftKings points per game on the road, 30 DK points. If you want to play Clay in tournaments, I think his ownership will be fairly low for a two game slate. Like it's fine, but I'm not super confident in Clay right now. Jordan Poole is a mid-range guard option is, is okay. He only played 20 minutes last game, which is a little weird, but normally Poole plays like low 30s minutes, and I think that's what we're going to get from him today is probably low 30s minutes. 
He's a guy that can get hot, has a big upside. I think 6700 is about where he should be priced, but pool is playable. Draymond Green's price tag has come way down just because he's been so bad in this series. He just hasn't shown much upside. You know, has yet to put up over 30 draftings points in this series. But, you know, last game, he did have 20 DK points in only 22 minutes. If he plays his normal 36 minutes last game, who knows how many fancy points he scores last game. So, like, at 5,800, I do like Draymond at this salary. I think this price tag is starting to get, like, low enough to where he's a pretty good option. I mean, I don't expect Draymond to continue to put up, like, 20 fancy points a night. I think at some point, we're going to see Draymond have a game where he gets, like, 8 points, 10 rebounds, 6, you know, six, seven, eight assists, maybe get some, a few blocks, a few steals. He, he has 40, 50 point upside. It's just a matter of, you know, if he can finally, you know, have one of those games. But I do like that price tag on Draymond. Wiggins as a mid range option, I think's fine. You know, he's going to play pretty good minutes if it's a close game. 5,600 is a little too cheap for Wiggins. Otto Porter is questionable for this game. He did have to leave their last game. Um, he did leave early, only played 12 minutes. This is actually kind of an important injury because Porter, you know, for the most part, has been a pretty consistent part of their bench rotation. Been playing about 22, 24 minutes a night. If he gets ruled out, like I think you probably see a few more minutes for maybe Jonathan Kaminga. Jonathan Kaminga did get some extended minutes last game because of the blowout. But before the blowout, like he was not playing much at all. He didn't even start the second half. He only played five minutes in the first half. So maybe Kaminga plays more if Porter's out. Like if you wanted to take a shot on Kaminga, if Porter sits, like I think that's something you could do. Maybe you see more minutes for like Kevon Looney. Maybe you see Draymond and Kevon Looney play a little bit more alongside each other. Bielitsa actually did start the second half last game. Um, maybe Bielitsa gets more minutes today if Porter's out. It's possible. Bielitsa is a guy that can be productive when he does get minutes. I mean, the Porter news is pretty important. For now, I'm just going to expect him to play. But if he does get ruled out, I think it would benefit probably Kaminga, Looney, and Bielitsa. Kaminga might be the guy that's like the most exciting um, just because, you know, he he has a path to upside if the minutes are there. It's just that so far in this series, they have clearly preferred to play Porter over him. Even though Kaminga has started, he's barely played in any of those games. Now, if, if they have no Porter... That might mean they have to play Kaminga like 15, 20 minutes, which at 3,300, he's got a path to 25 DraftKings points if he plays like 20 minutes. But that's really it for Golden State, guys, and that's it for this Friday night slate. I hope you guys enjoyed this video once again. You know, Like I said at the beginning, this could be one of our last two-game slates of the season. We might have a two-game slate on Sunday. Not sure yet. Right now, there are no games scheduled for Saturday, so probably won't, you know, won't have a video up on Saturday, but we'll see about Sunday, um, how many games there are Sunday. But I appreciate you guys watching these videos all throughout the playoffs. I hope you have enjoyed them, and if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button down below. Hit that subscribe button as well. Go check out Prize Picks. Again, the sponsor of the vid of this video. You can sign up for Prize Picks and use my promo code, promo code NOAA. Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100 when you do sign up with my promo code. As always, I you know greatly appreciate Prize Picks uh, supporting the, supporting my channel, um, promoting these or promoting themselves on my site, or me being able to pro promote them on my site um, on my you know YouTube channel. Appreciate Prize Picks, you know, sponsoring these uh, videos every day. But huge shout out to them. Sign up, use code NOAA, get your first deposit matched up to $100. But that's all that I got for today, guys. Wish you the best of luck on this Friday night slate. Hope you enjoy your Friday night, and we will see you in the next video.